us to the city of angels, Los Angeles, California. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Minnesota Vikings. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. going to lose yardage here back to his own 18 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down with Gurley now gone and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete nice play there to force the incompletion and to me one thing's for sure when you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road you absolutely have to get takeaways you've got to get the ball from them yeah win that turnover battle gonna be key they didn't get one there but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that they might just get a few yeah once you get one defensive teams think they come in bunches Throwing on third, gone. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. They'll get 11, but still a little short, fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath. there you like the call i do i think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down in this case it didn't happen So in their own territory, but they only need a few inches. So they're going to opt to go for this thing. We'll see. Maybe a surprise pass or run. What will they do? We're about to find out. Fourth down. They're going to go for it. It's gone. That's to his running back complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They only needed a few inches, but still some anxious moments there. But they do convert on fourth. the 45 yard line just a yard on the catch there it'll be second and nine one thing we do know he's going to get his catches so as they move forward defensively got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary they only got a yard out of that last completion and that makes this second and nine Oh, first 
first carry for Trenton Cannon. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. Shotgun snap for goal. He can run for it, and he will. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. Even though it's the opening drive of the game, he wasn't shy about taking off and running with the football, even knowing the defense is definitely going to take their shots at him, and that's exactly what they did. He better learn to slide, otherwise he won't be around to finish this one. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one hears away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. carry for Dalvin Cook. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Second down, Cousins. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there of 20 yards. On first and 10, Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And he's brought down. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Cousins now on second down. Flush to his right. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. From the red zone now, Cousins. Open man is Treadwell, and he's got it for the Minnesota touchdown. Laquan Treadwell, his first touchdown on the year. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. 
make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They'll fake the handoff. Now gone. Looking deep downfield. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Well, partner, I guess that answers the question about whether they're going to sit on it or not. <laughs> it does. Now we'll see if they try that again. Yeah, I think what we find on plays like that, when you take that oh, shot, no. if you're unsuccessful, then you go way more conservative to finish the half, you know? I think that's the way they'll go. From the gun on third down, gone. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. On first down, it's Gurley. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Tackle made there by the UCF man, Mike Hughes. Well, usually you don't think of the cornerback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense. Big play for the defense. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. He's going to look deep down the field. A 50-50 ball here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Trey Waynes. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Following the interception, Cousins. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. And Dominican Sue with a great push up front. He picks up the sack at a loss of eight. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now a second down throw for Cousins. He's got to complete to Stephon Diggs. And he's brought down after a good game. Give him 30 yards there. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. Cousins going to come up on a first and 10. And he's a perfect 5 for 5 here to begin the game. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. A gain of three, second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down, Cook. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be third down. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV, called a scouting friend of mine and said, who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you're watching a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. I wonder if they just kind of outguess themselves a little bit, trying to run it on third down. Probably should have gone to the air to try and pick it up. Instead, the punting unit will have to run on the field. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. 
The result's not great thus far. A punt on the first drive and an interception last time out. And let's face it, every team wants to come out on the field and play with some confidence, play with some tempo, play with some rhythm. And when you're making those types of mistakes, you're not getting any of that put together. So what do you say, time to get back to the basics for them? In a lot of ways, yes. But the biggest one, of course, is finding people who will take care of the football and make a few plays. you got to have a drive now that calms down the entire team. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by the former first rounder, Trey Waynes. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Cousins steps away to his left. Now he's going to let it go deep left side. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Gun. On second down, Cousins again, escaping the pressure right. Now he's going to throw deep. And this is caught inside the five. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, his first touchdown on the year. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, had your fun? All right, throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. And Anthony Barr just has it all as far as I'm concerned in terms of physique, athletic ability, and now he's versatile as well. When he came out of UCLA, he put out a blitz coming, and down he goes. A man who played on this very field for USC, Emerson Griffin, with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Here's Johnny Hacker now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Returning here is Wright. It's a 45-yard punt and eight on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10. Cousins on first down. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. So a minute 56 to play in this first half. 
We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. First down, here's Cousins. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Nikhil Roby Coleman, and he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. He had a little bit of the turnover bug last week, three interceptions. Not an absolute disaster, but another one here. Do you start to get a little worried? You worry about your team as a whole because you have to find a way to make those interceptions quote-unquote go away, and that means your defense. They've got to go out there on sudden change and at least touchdown, Allen! Todd Gurley able to get back with it a touchdown. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. So here comes the kickoff, and what now is just a one-score, six-point game. This is taking you to 13. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. A good pick up there, 26 yards. As a general rule, offensive yellow, linemen yellow, like yellow. to know where their yellow. quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. But sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. A second down throw for Cousins. And Cook has it, left side. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. Let's go, let's go. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. That he's into the clear. He's at the 50, 30, past the 20. And he will bring it back. It's that was an interception, but on the field, the guys who are picking it off, they're not saying that. What word are they using? It's Oski. <laughs> that means catch the ball and go the other way. That's your vernacular. I've never heard anybody say Oski. Ask around. They'll tell you. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that will give them the lead here as we get on towards halftime. This will be taken about the 12. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Cousins now to throw on first down. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. 
And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. Flushed out right. Now on the run, he'll throw it back deep over the middle. There defensively was John Johnson to knock it free. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. On third down, Cousins. He sets to fire deep. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll punt it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Oh, he'll field it in the end zone. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. All right, folks, eager to get back to this week four matchup. We won't put up a fight. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. A first down throw for Cousins. Fighting him off. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it second down. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Cousins now. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Eluding the pressure right. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Calls for the fair catch. Makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Andrew Sendejo in on the stop. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. And they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Ever 
Everson Griffin. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring a fourth down. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Now it's right. A very nice job on the run back there. He'll get 23 yards all told. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full play, but they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. From the gun, here's Cousins. Flush to his right. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And boy, that one drops incomplete. But if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. The Vikings on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 16. Working out of the gun, Cousins being chased out left. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Malcolm Smith. In there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. And now a whistle and a timeout called by the kicking team. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And this is off the crossbar. Denied a chance to take the lead, but to no avail. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was the crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. On first down, gone. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. To throw on second down is gone. And Cooks hands it over the middle. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. They'll get three out of the dump off there, and that'll lead to a third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by the pro bowler, Anthony Barr. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. 
Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start out on the ground early. He takes this for three to the 29. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Obama. 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 On second down, here's Goff. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. Goff finding Cooks on a big play. 49 yards. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. He's to the 10, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Zerline good with a PAT, and we are tied at 21. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get a this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. On first and 10, Cousins. His throw incomplete. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Cousins now on second down. Escaping the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And that'll make it third down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. The Vikings on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 10. To throw. Cousins forced out to his left. And that's incomplete. It was the free safety, LaMarcus Joyner, that time, able to make the play. Boy, the numbers throwing the football, just not trending in the right direction. Last week, he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement, but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up, and it's just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. 35 yards on the return. Picked up some good blocks as well. And the Rams are going to start this drive in great field position as they take over. 
So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense. They got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. Back now in Los Angeles. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Here's Goff now on second down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. It's a former star crosstown at UCLA, Anthony Barr. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. From the gun, here's gone. This is caught, it's Cooks. Brandon Cooks, touchdown LA. Brandon Cooks, take advantage of the turnover to put up six. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Here's Cousins, buying time to his left. Now he'll throw deep left side. This is caught inside the 15. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Stephon Diggs with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And, oh, he missed it. No good. And they'll remain down by a point. So we're back to a one-point game now as the kickoff comes. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. He'll try and chew some clock with Gurley. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bifema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the 10-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter, turning it over. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Aaron Donald in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And the hit jarred it loose. 
It's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. To throw is Cousins, and this is going to be incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. And that is no good. Wide to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. So a bullet dodge there defensively. They surrender excellent field position on the kick return, but it winds up not costing them a thing. And that's a tough sequence of events from an offensive perspective. The inability to get first downs leads to the field goal try. And the inability to cash that in leads to nothing on the scoreboard. It's Everson Griffin who made the tackle. Accepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. This game, it's been defensively oriented on both sides. So I guess it stands to reason that the play of the game comes on defense. So it's my kind of game. You know that. That's Anytime right. we have that's a defensive right. battle. But that, as you said, it stands to reason that's the way the game tilted. Someone had to make a big play. And the way the defenses were dominating, that's exactly what we got. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where... The coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me one, see that when we're having a tough patch. This two shall pass, this two shall pass, and then finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. It's caught left side by Cooks. He's at the 30. Touchdown, L.A. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? And, you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab all the when I can. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it, because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL, well, let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. But can they come back now and redeem themselves? Of course, last year, you think about Dalvin Cook's injury in week four with a torn ACL, just hoping that he can stay healthy in 2018. And if so, we'll see plenty of runs that will be big time in 2018. Because in 2017, he took over the starting running back job as a rookie and was off to a terrific start. In fact, if you ask people in the Minnesota Vikings organization, they were giddy at the fact that they were able to get him outside of the first round and plug him into the lineup. They expect him to be big time in this season. As big of a play as we've had in this one so far. This is third and three. Now Cousins. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. 18 yards there and a first down. 
And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. Cousins on first down. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And he will bring it back. It's a In a tie game, fourth quarter, that's about as big of a defensive play as you can possibly make. And it didn't happen by accident. That was, that was scouting right there. They've seen things that have happened before. They knew in certain situations the type of plays they like to run. Read it and were able to go after the football, get it, and take it into the end zone for a touchdown for themselves. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, that didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. On second down, Cousins again, dancing to his left. And some space here. He finds an opening past the 40. And there he goes again. And he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45 time for a break we'll come back see what transpires after this two, two, two. Let's go, let's go. he'll look to throw he's gonna let it fly that's caught inside the 20 give him 30 yards there and two big plays one after the other now all of a sudden they're on the march Got to feel good about what they've just gotten done and now feel really good about what's in front of them. He's back to throw. Out to his left. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Ten yards on the pick up there. And it'll be second down. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. They'll look to throw. They'll roll him out right. This will be caught at about the six. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Kyle Rudolph, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And the Rams getting set to go now. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences right, called. Go, if they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Yeah, another timeout called by the Vikings now. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And that one blown up quickly. As he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And just like that, it's third down. Goff now to throw. And oh, they almost had another one. 
They are all over the football in this game. Nearly another pick. Now fourth down. Nearly an interception. If that one's picked off, it's over. So a new lease on life, so to speak. A lot of times when you're in coverage, you're so focused on the man and the coverage that sometimes the ball, if it arrives, it surprises you. That may have happened to him in that situation. The Rams going for it on four. Gone. And they hit him as he throws as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and ten. Cousins to throw. And this is going to be intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they get it with under a minute. to go now in the football game. After the interception, here's gone. And some room to maneuver. And they're gonna be set up in the red zone right around the 17-yard line. Just a little bit of a rough stretch. Six interceptions now in these last two weeks combined. I know the easy thing is to go back to mechanics, footwork, things of that nature. I'm also wondering, is he getting fooled by what he's seeing on defense? Is the scouting report change or the showing him things different than what he expected? For the second week in a row, he's throwing it to the guys in the wrong color shirts. Yeah, he better figure, whatever the reason is, he better figure it out. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Here's Cousins, and this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Mikel Roby Coleman, and he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used the calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot, they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it. And sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Whoa, whoa! Not by 20! Show, show! Golf! He's going to go for a big play downfield. Now the defense loses him. It's complete! Absolute bedlam. You can forget overtime. What a finish. And this crowd in a frenzy. As well they should be. That's the type of ending that you actually pay money to see. And when it turns out in your direction, oh, yeah. You feel real good about that one. Let's face it. There are a few people who travel to see their team. They're not happy. But overall, this crowd is loving what they just saw. The extra point is good. And on the final play of the game, they walk away with a victory. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.